I studied painting and I like to think of myself as a painter. In recent years, I've spent most of my time though producing an art magazine and through that art events and most of my time lately has been spent producing video interviews, um, interviews with artists and curators and gallery directors. But this has kind of existed parallel next to a studio practice. So a practice of making videos, which I exhibit, and then books and the odd painting. If you look at the super paper, which I started uh, with some friends after we graduated, there is a kind of shared current with my more traditional artistic practice. And I guess it's this fascination with you know, telling the story of art. And then in my artistic practice, it's quite obsessed with you know, our cultural memory and how we kind of define ourselves and how we tell our stories. This kind of parallel process of you know, very specifically telling the story of art through the magazine and video production and then kind of more poetically or more artistically doing that through books and videos and exhibitions kind of came to a head last year. With an exhibition, I guess, curated, but also edited with an issue of Dust Super Paper. The exhibition was called Acid Gothic, and it took this idea of acid or psychedelia and gothic as cultural trajectories which have reappeared over time and traced these possible realities, I guess, between between works and how they bounced off each other and ideas and how they kind of spiralled in and out of each other and then also sites. It was sited in Elizabeth Bay House initially through a tracking shot which spiralled up the stairs and through the various exhibition spaces and then this tracking shot which, which was presented as a continuous loop across two channels was exhibited at um, MOP projects in Chippendale. And I was really interested in this way where you could have a kind of a virtual or mediated experience of an exhibition, which is, I guess, in a certain way, thinking about it now, quite similar to how I spend a lot of my time engaging with art in, you know, behind the lens, documenting exhibitions. And I really enjoyed the, um, the process of doing this because it got, a, from a curatorial perspective, it gave me the opportunity to work with really interesting, ec interesting works which I'd seen and were very famous, like um, Tracy Moffat's Laudanum works, which were photographed in the Elizabeth Bay House but then also to kind of put these with more tangentially related works, um, such as Tomislav Nikolic, who's a painter from Melbourne, kind of does very beautiful, magical, but kind of strange colour field works with marble dust and, and different types of museum glass confusing the audience. And then other artists, which I guess are more of my um, cohort. So Giselle Stamber, who works uh, a lot with the internet and ideas like that, and Sarah Mosca, who kind of paired off against Tracy Moffat in a much more poetic, not poetic, in a much more abstract kind of way. In that exhibition, I don't know, it's complicated, but, and in the conversation with the artists on, you know, putting it together, they're like, so are you, are you an artist? You're, you're obviously filming it, and you're putting a lot of energy into directing it, but you're curating it, and you're editing this magazine, which has all this other body of content to go with it. And I guess that kind of goes to this kind of idea of job title, and with that, this kind of sense of efficacy or responsibility, if you're an artist and you're curating this show or you're putting these exhibition, you know, putting these works next to each other, what responsibility do you have? And I don't know, I didn't really have a, a firm take on that, but I really enjoy that interplay between the various kind of roles which, which do exist and definitely roles which are perceived, you know, how am I meant to be behaving? When I'm making work, it's, I mean, I obviously, it's these two parallel tracks and it sometimes doesn't feel that neat. It's not always two, it's kind of, there's like just lots of stuff. And like any studio practice, be it, you know, you're painting or you're sitting there kind of editing or thinking about how to, you know, position a publication. There's a lot of time spent alone and like staring into the abyss. This kind of existential 3 p.m. thing that grabs you. And that definitely is the kind of the anxiety which exists behind any kind of creative process, particularly at the beginning when you're thinking about how you're going to get started in something. When I'm starting a project, I think it's often born out of, when I'm either in art or in this kind of production role. There is a shared questioning. What am I trying to do with this pro project? What is the question at the heart of this project? But then also there's this sense of play and there's this sense of kind of experimentation, which I think is at the beginning of any project and kind of really marks out the purpose which you have and the kind of the enjoyment which you get from it. And that sense of play, I think you just have to kind of go with.
There are a couple of ways which I like to you know, start a project. I love a Google spreadsheet when I'm doing production stuff because it has this false sense of logic to it. And there's often not any logic, but it kind of makes me feel quite structured. But one thing I do which kind of exists in the complete kind of antithesis to that or in constant kind of conflict with that is I, um, I like to doodle. I love doodling and I'm always just kind of just making pads and pads of just like kind of scribbles of ideas. And it's also, it's in that process where you have kind of this faux, you know, rigid system and then this constant churning out of material, you can kind of find new ideas and you get, oh, this new little idea and then you can put it in a little cell or a little, you know, grid and give it this sense of kind of authority. But it, it's also with this kind of constant flow of ideas that things don't really matter. So you have this kind of, um, I don't know, this kind of, this, this flow of ideas and you can just pluck ideas out and then if you don't like it, you can just put it back in. What the use of a course in visual art is, is it gives you a mode of working and it gives you a mode of thinking and a mode, a mode of engaging with um, not just culture, with the whole world, you know, how society works, how ideas bounce off each other and then how you interact with it. So when I'm producing things which, and when I'm on the other end of producing, which is not doodling or, or fanciful Excel spreadsheets, when I'm actually, you know, out there selling stuff, or making stuff for like, you know, carrying large things to events. This artistic process or continues and this, art, you know, this visual arts way of engaging with the world continues. The most obvious example I think of is this, um, this idea of look and put. So a painter or a photographer will go and make a mark or will go and document something and then they'll take it back to the studio or they'll, they'll step back from the painting and they'll, they'll see how it worked. So this, kind of constant process of making a mark or doing something and stepping back and seeing it. And there's always this sense of incompletion, this sense of I'm arriving at something based on these very small increments. And that kind of, I get from painting and definitely continues as a way of working um, with the production stuff quite explicitly. So we make an issue of a magazine, I'll step back from it and be like, oh, what worked in that way? And we'll put some videos up and it's always this experimental way, like here's a body of videos that go together like a set of works in an exhibition or here's a set of you know tasks which we did which are all bound by the same motivation how did they work and um, I think more and more that way of working is very useful to me but actually quite prized in um, in the economy if you don't want to I mean it's such an awful thing to say but it is people talk about this kind of creative even the word creative is so co-opted by marketing at the moment or you know Corporations, but having a, a, a process oriented perspective on what you're doing is really valuable. I spend most of my time working from the kitchen table. The, you know, the working process is, you know, you have your computer or your laptop and your, your pen and paper and, and whatnot. But then I would say equally as much time as is spent kind of doing that and then you have the, you know, the existential hour that grabs you because you spend so much time alone at the kitchen table. And that's not an office environment by any means. I spend as much time doing that um, out in galleries, out in, um, at exhibitions and in, in the world speaking to artists. I think that's actually been the most valuable time I've spent in my time since graduating, is this constant kind of, in, you know, presence in, this constant presence in the work and in the lives or in the context of other artists and other curators and, you know, gallery directors which is great and it's one of the, the most amazing things that kind of this self-initiated dust, super paper dust platforms project has brought. So this ability to kind of enter into galleries and ask them what's going on. But I, I, I know of doing this through dust, super paper, but now that I know of doing it, I would highly recommend to anyone to, you know, be there and ask people questions and find some reason for them to answer you sincerely.